Ever felt like it's you against the giant corporate world? Imagine your family's health and future at stake, all because a powerful company cuts corners. That's the harrowing struggle faced by the residents of Hinkley, California, in the landmark case of Anderson v. Pacific Gas and Electric. Today, we're diving deep to uncover truths and lessons that can empower us all. Before we begin, hit that like and subscribe button or you'll be swimming in toxic water with Aaron Brockovich on your tail. In the arid expanses of California's Mojave Desert lies the small community of Hinkley. An idyllic rural life, however, overshadowed by a silent predator. For decades, the Pacific Gas and Electric's compressor station had been a fixture here, but its legacy would soon unravel as one of environmental infamy. Residents began to report peculiar health issues rashes, unexplained illnesses, and worrisome rates of cancer. Livestock fell ill, and plants withered, all beneath an invisible shadow. It was here amidst growing concern that a powerhouse legal assistant named Aaron Brockovich entered the scene, driven by an unwavering sense of justice. Working at a small law firm, Brockovich stumbled upon medical records that hinted at a much larger problem. It wasn't merely a series of unfortunate events, but a pattern. These were symptoms of something sinister, lurking in the very water that sustained the town. Chromium-6, or hexavalent chromium, was discovered, a corrosive and toxic form of chromium. PG&E had been using it to prevent rust in its machinery, and while this was not unusual in itself, the method of disposal was. The wastewater was being placed in unlined ponds, seeping into the groundwater, the same water the residents of Hinkley used for drinking, for cooking, for their very lives. As Aaron dug deeper, the evidence mounted in magnitude and horror. Internal documents revealed that PG&E had known about the contamination since the 60s. Not only had they known, but they also attempted to conceal it, offering to buy affected property in exchange for silence. But the people of Hinkley were not to be silenced. In their ailments and distress, they found a voice. A voice that Aaron Brockovich amplified through her determined investigations and unyielding resolve. Her findings would not only ignite one of the most significant legal battles against corporate environmental negligence, but would also expose the vulnerable underbelly of a community in crisis. The stage was set for a monumental face-off with PG&E, a battle not just for compensation, but for truth, for health, and for the future of Hinckley. Aaron Brockovich's dogged pursuit of justice set in motion a chain of events that would reverberate far beyond this small town's dusty roads. Armed with alarming evidence and a fierce determination, Aaron Brockovich and her boss, the tenacious lawyer Ed Massery, set out to confront a corporate giant. They embarked on a David versus Goliath battle, seeking justice for the people of Hinkley. The pair went door to door, gathering harrowing testimonies from afflicted residents. Each account added weight to their cause, weaving a narrative of suffering and corporate malfeasance, families with sick children, Adults with devastating diagnoses and a community in anguish painted a compelling picture that demanded legal intervention. As the evidence stacked up, Brockovich and Massery filed a class action lawsuit against PG&E. They alleged that the company had knowingly contaminated the groundwater with carcinogenic chromium-6, endangering the health of the entire community. It was a daring move. To take on such an industry titan was fraught with risk and uncertainty. But for Brockovich and Massery, it was a moral imperative. The litigation process was grueling. PG&D wielded its vast resources, deploying an army of attorneys to shield itself from the claims. But Brockovich's relentless research uncovered a labyrinth of corporate deception, showing that PG&E had obfuscated the truth about the toxic threat to Hinckley's water supply. With the lawsuit filed, the case began to gain national attention. Media outlets picked up the story, casting a spotlight on the plight of Hinckley residents and the mounting evidence against PG&E. Public scrutiny intensified, placing the utility company under a microscope and drawing the attention of environmentalists and legal experts alike. The case's trajectory was unpredictable, with each side fully entrenched in its position. Yet at the heart of this legal maelstrom were the people of Hinckley, whose lives had been irrevocably altered, and who now looked to the court system for restitution and acknowledgement of their suffering. As the legal battle unfolded, Aaron Brockovich's name became synonymous with environmental advocacy, personifying the fight against corporate indifference. Engulfed in legal strategies and ethical debates, the story of Anderson v. Pacific Gas and Electric was no longer just a lawsuit. It became a symbol of the pursuit of environmental justice and accountability.
At the heart of the case were the residents of Hinckley, whose stories revealed the human cost of corporate negligence. The Anderson family, bearing the name of the landmark lawsuit, were among the many plaintiffs whose lives had been upended by the contamination. They stood with their neighbors, united by a shared narrative of illness and fear. The community's claims were not abstract legal arguments, they were visceral, painful realities etched into the lives of real people. Families like the Andersons reported serious health complications, some of which were potentially life-threatening. Cancer diagnoses rippled through the community, leaving a palpable sense of despair in their wake. Digestive disorders, reproductive issues, and chronic respiratory problems became all too common, forming a pattern too consistent to dismiss. Children, particularly vulnerable to the effects of toxic exposure, suffered a range of ailments. Mothers spoke of the heartache of watching their young ones grapple with diseases no child should face, of the rashes that spread across tender skin, and of the inexplicable downturns in their health. Residents who had once taken pride in their wells came to regard the water with suspicion and dread. Stories emerged of strange tastes and tooth discoloration, early warnings that had gone unheeded. The water, a life-giving force, had transformed into a carrier of invisible insidious harm. The plaintiffs alleged that Pacific Gas and Electric had robbed them of more than their health. It had stolen the tranquility of their community and replaced it with fear. Homes became sites of uncertainty and the future turned hazy as residents grappled with the long-term implications of exposure. The trouble ran deeper than the water wells. It seeped into their very livelihoods. Property values plummeted, trapping families in homes they could neither safely inhabit nor afford to abandon. The contamination had not only poisoned the water, but had tainted every facet of their existence in Hinckley. The plaintiffs came from all walks of life, but they were bound by a common plea. They sought reparation for the damages they had suffered, and safety assurance that no one else would ever endure their plight. The lawsuit they brought forth was not just about financial compensation. It aimed to hold PG&E accountable and to protect future generations from suffering a similar fate. As the residents of Hinckley stood united demanding justice and reparation, Pacific Gas and Electric mounted a defense. The energy giant, facing an onslaught of public opinion and legal pressure, was poised to counter the claims of widespread harm. PG&E did acknowledge a measure of wrongdoing, admitting that the disposal of chromium-contaminated water had not met the requisite standards. This concession, however, was but a sliver of the larger contest. While they conceded to improper disposal practices, PG&E battled fiercely against the extent of harm cited by Hinckley's residents. The company's defense hinged on scientific arguments. They sought to minimize the perceived effects of chromium-6, disputing the direct link between exposure and the health issues plaguing the community. Experts were called upon. Reports were referenced, all in the bid to cast doubt on the causation that the concentration of chromium in the water was not conclusively tied to the ailments reported. Moreover, PG&E contested the notion of widespread negligence. They pointed to protocols that, in their view, had been followed and to the evolving understanding of chromium-6 at the time of disposal. The implication was that any oversight was not intentional, but a product of historical context, a situation not fully understood. The defense narrative was one of a company facing unexpected consequences, grappling with environmental standards that had since evolved. Their legal team worked to compartmentalize the issue, to paint it as isolated incidents, rather than a systemic failing. Despite their efforts, the community's resolve did not waver. As PG&E sought to defend its reputation and financial interests, the people of Hinckley maintained a relentless pursuit of acknowledgement and remedy for the harm that had infiltrated their lives. Each defense put forth by the company only served to deepen the resolve of the plaintiffs, ensuring that the case would continue on its contentious path. Neither side showed signs of receding, with the stakes too high and the wounds too deep to retreat. The courtroom became the battleground for a conflict that transcended legal arguments, striking at the core of corporate responsibility and the safety of an American community. The legal standoff that had drawn national attention was headed towards its denouement. Pacific Gas and Electric, facing mounting pressure and undeniable evidence, came to the decision that would change the course of environmental litigation history. They agreed to a settlement, and it was monumental.
In 1996, PG&E settled the class action lawsuit for a staggering $333 million, a figure that etched this case in the annals as the largest settlement ever paid in a direct action lawsuit in the United States at that time. For the residents of Hinckley, it was a moment of vindication, if not a complete salve for the wounds they carried. This settlement was more than just a significant financial outcome. It catapulted the issue of corporate environmental responsibility into the spotlight. Companies across the country took notice, realizing the true cost of neglecting environmental safeguards could be not just in the billions, but also in the irreversible damage to their reputations. For PG&E, the settlement was an acknowledgement that no corporate entity was too powerful to be held accountable for its actions. It served as a wake-up call for industries reliant on potentially harmful chemicals, prompting a re-evaluation of practices and a reinforcement of regulatory compliance. The implications of this decision resonated beyond the corporate world, stirring the public and lawmakers alike. It helped catalyze a shift in how environmental regulations were perceived and enforced. No longer could the stewardship of the environment be considered a peripheral concern. It was now a central tenet of operational integrity for every business. Moreover, this settlement led to a renewed focus on the regulation of Chromium-6, with stricter monitoring and reporting requirements coming to the fore. The ripple effect of the Hinckley case would influence environmental policy, leading to enhanced protection measures not only for the present but for generations to come. And so, as PG&E reconciled with the weight of its financial punishment, the legacy of Hinckley was only just beginning. The settlement marked a profound close to a chapter for the residents, but the story of Anderson v. Pacific Gas and Electric would long endue as a beacon call for environmental justice. The story of Hinckley's struggle did not fade into the shadows following the settlement. Instead, it continued to resonate, becoming a touchstone of environmental activism and corporate accountability. The case, and Aaron Brockovich's role in it, caught the eye of Hollywood, with the eponymous film bringing the legal battle and its implications to the silver screen for broader audiences to witness. Brockovich herself became an icon, emblematic of the power of perseverance and the impact one individual can have on the course of justice. But the aftermath was more than cinematic acclaim. The Hinckley case left an indelible mark on environmental policy. California set a precedent by establishing the nation's first-ever enforceable standard for chromium-6 in drinking water. Regulators around the country began to scrutinize the presence of this toxic substance more closely, ushering in a new era of environmental vigilance. The awareness raised by Anderson v. Pacific Gas and Electric led consumers and community members alike to question what lay in their own backyards. Civic engagement experienced a renaissance, with an empowered public demanding transparency and a greater say in industrial practices that could affect their health and the environment. Ongoing efforts to safeguard Hinckley and places like it have persisted. Initiatives for cleaner technology, water monitoring programs, and community outreach have sought to prevent a repetition of such an incident. The Hinckley case paved the way for more stringent environmental regulations and a shift in corporate culture, emphasizing the necessity of ethical stewardship over exploitation. The dialogues begun by this case continue to shape environmental discourse to this day. Citizens are more informed, regulators are more stringent, and corporations more cognizant of the risks both legal and moral, of ignoring the impact of their operations on the planet and its inhabitants. In Hinckley, the fight goes on, with residents and advocates alike ensuring that the legacy of the case is not just a chapter in history books, but a living, breathing commitment to a cleaner, safer world. The story of Anderson versus Pacific Gas and Electric is not simply one of conflict and settlement. It is an ongoing narrative of awareness, action, and the unfaltering pursuit of a future where industrial progress does not come at the cost of human health or the environment. Thank you for joining us on this impactful journey. We've uncovered a powerful story of resilience, justice, and the enduring fight for a safer world. Remember to like and subscribe to stay connected and informed about our future videos. Your support fuels our commitment to shining a light on vital issues. Stay tuned for more inspiring content. Thank you for watching.